So in this video today, we're gonna look at what a capacitor is, how it works, what it does, how to identify a bad cap and what happens when they do go bad, how to find a replacement and how to install it. So capacitors were originally known as condensers. So if you hear some, the old timers talk about a condenser, you know what it is. Basically they're used to store a charge. They're able to get rid of that charger very quickly and like a battery which discharges slowly, these can do it almost instantly. In a power supply, generally you're gonna see aluminum caps like this and possibly some of the, the polyester st style like that. Generally they're gonna be used for either filtering out DC because they allow AC to pass through or they're gonna be used to help filter and, and to steady a DC voltage going out to the main board or to the t gun, something like that. What happens when a capacitor goes bad? Capacitors are affected by temperature and voltage. If they're rated for a certain voltage, like this one's rated for 35 volts, and you happen to expose it to a higher voltage, you may find that the cap starts to fail prematurely. Also, temp will cause it to fail prematurely. When they begin to fail, they may start to produce gas inside of them, which will result in the tops becoming puffy. If it's bad enough, the top might burst open and allow the, can the dielectric inside the the insulating layer to ooze out. So you'll often see a brown substance on top of the, the cap and sometimes on the board as well. Certain capacitors, if they happen to fail spectacularly, can actually blow the casing completely off and you'll be left with something that looks like that on the board. And you'll see kind of like a paper outside and uh, the little rubber stopper on the bottom and not much else. And on some TVs, some power supplies, you'll see that all the time and they'll blow completely off the board. So here we've got a couple more examples of bad caps. As you can see the tops on these, they're blown open and some of the dielectric is oozed out from the inside. And that happens just with the heat that gets generated inside the cap when it starts to short out and fail. This one here is close, the top's puffy, but it hasn't actually blown open yet. But again, this one would be bad and if you saw that on your board, you would need to replace it. The common issues for bad caps tend to be the TV not powering on, the TV powering on but taking multiple attempts. The multiple attempts will probably take more and more as time goes on and the cap starts to dry out even more. Well, usually once the TV comes on it's going to function normally, but again once you power it off and try and turn it back on you're going to hit those issues where it doesn't want to start up. The other kind of capacitor that you'll see used on inverters or sometimes on power supplies that have high, high voltage sections on them going out to lamps are these little ceramic capacitors. These are often used for feedback from the lamps. And if those go bad, they generally don't, they, they don't go puffy like a, you know, your aluminum caps like these. What they're gonna do is usually show a burn spot or they can crack and fracture. If those go bad, generally it acts like a bad lamp. The TV may come on briefly and then the backlights might shut off. The rest of the TV could stay on, but your backlights are gonna turn off. If your backlights turn off, make sure that you check these caps. If you see any burn marks, spots, anything like that, it's worth replacing them. Make sure that you use the same voltage and capacitance. They're really picky on these little feedback circuits. If you don't put the right one in, it won't work. The style here, the kind of the polyester cap or the Teflon cap, generally these again don't go puffy, but you'll often see burn marks. You sometimes see that one side will become uh, kind of extended or bubble up more just because there's more heat generated there. Again, usually they're pretty easy at the spot. Just check for burn marks and cracks on the cap. Identifying bad caps. Well, as we just mentioned, bad caps usually show up with puffy tops and we have a little example right here. This one right here. And you can physically feel it. If you're not sure, you can kind of compare just by running your fingers over the top. Sometimes they can be a little confusing, the little crosshatch pattern on the top can sometimes make it look like it almost has a bump, but if you run across multiple, you'll feel that one definitely has a raised top. As you can see on this one, it's started to actually open up, there's a little brown spot. Sometimes if the TV's running, you'll actually get smoke or steam pouring out of these as they start to heat up and dry out and start to short. Sometimes the casings will blow off and it will look like that. It'll just be the inside, which is usually some kind of cardboard or paper inside of there between the two layers of aluminum. So for testing, if you only have a multimeter, uh, usually you're gonna have to take the cap off the board to make it work properly to check a cap. If it's on there and there are other capacitors nearby or resistors, it can affect the results. So if you remove it, that's the best way to check. 
So we've set our meter to capacitance and I'm gonna put a probe on each leg and see what it reads. And right there it's reading about 270 or so and dropping. And if we look at this cap, it's meant to be 680 microfarads. So we know that it's defective. Usually your capacitor is not going to read exactly what it says on the label. Oftentimes there's about a 20%, 10 to 20% difference from the actual marked values to the one you're going to read. If it's within that, you should be fine. If it's anything more than that, you're going to want to replace the capacitor. So another way to check for bad caps is to use an ESR meter. This is used to check in circuit for bad caps and can pick up bad caps that are not visible to the naked eye. A good cap when you check should ring and drop all the way down to zero ohms pretty much. Bad one on the other hand, this is our puffy one from earlier, shows only that it's just good and doesn't beep at us. This one we know is bad because it has the puffy top. This one should look really bad. This one's the one that blew. Yep, and it shows in the bad range and barely moves. So here with a board and we can actually use the cap checker right on the board. And we're gonna try this one. And it comes up as compare. Well, we can look around the board and try different caps. Let's try this one right here. And that one's definitely good. So we can be pretty sure that this one is bad. And then we will go ahead and we can pull the cap and check it using our regular multimeter and check the capacitance and replace it if it was defective. So a lot of people are probably not gonna have an ESR meter. It's one that generally techs are only gonna have or serious hobbyists. Uh, if you've got a multimeter though, you can use it to try and check caps in circuit. But one of the issues you're gonna hit is when multiple caps are on the same set of trace. So right here we have these two 1500 microfarad caps. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna try and read the value for one of the caps. Okay, so we have our multimeter here and we've got it set in capacitance mode and we're gonna try and measure the value of one of the caps. And you're gonna take our probes and put one on each lead. And it'll auto range and go through. And it should give us the value. And it's coming up at about three millifarads, which is 3,000 microfarads. And we know from turning the board over that these should be this cap should be 1,500 microfarads. The reason we're getting the wrong value is that we have these two caps in parallel. And unlike your resistance, when you put caps in parallel, they add together. So if you get a, a reading that you're not sure of, make sure that you check and see if there's any other capacitors on that same line that are together in parallel. Make sure you add the values together and that should tell you if your reading is correct. Since we have the two 1500 microfarad caps in parallel, it should be reading about three millifarads or 3000 microfarads and that's exactly what we got on the reading. So we know that these caps are good. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at shopjimmy.com. If you have any further questions regarding your repair, simply post a question in the comments section below or call our award-winning customer service team at the number on your screen. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings. And don't forget to hit that like button 